All right, let's finish 12.1. If we have the Boolean identities where you can go through this and we have, you know, they ought to look familiar. You know, if we have things like x bar bar is x, what's that called? This is on page 815. Look familiar? We usually saw it like this. What did we call it in logic? Double negation, Double negation right? <laughs> we negate a statement. It's not the case that it's not the case that I'm an idiot, right? <laughs> it's like, wait a second. Did you just call yourself? Yes, I did. So that would be double negation. Um, what if we did this? In logic, this would be Q or Q is logically Q, and Q and Q is logically Q. And remember that the title for that law when we had it in logic? My loose definition was it the say it once rule. My name is Mark and my name is Mark. Uh, just say your name's Mark. Okay, my name's Mark or my name's Mark. Just say your name's Mark. <laughs> the idempotent laws, right? The say it once, right? They end up being the same thing. And so we have the idempotent. We have double negation. We have idempotent. Which would be the same thing under logic. My name is Mark, or 1 plus 1 is 3. That's the same thing as saying that my name is Mark. You know, if you or a false, it doesn't do anything. You just have the original proposition. So th those are the do-nothings. What are the laws that do nothing? They're called the, if you're left alone, it's the identity, right? So these would be identities laws. So if you go through this table, you have double negation, you have the idempotent, you have the identity, we have if I did this in logic Since zero should be zero, shouldn't it? Oh yes. Looking at copying up above because I was right about to write false on that side. <laughs> what would this lock be called? The domination. the domination, right? What's kind of interesting is in a Boolean algebra Right, what, what, Under one operator, you have an object. One of the objects does nothing. But under the other operator, it dominates. It destroys the object that you were dealing with. So 0 is the do-nothing of plus, which means true is the do-nothing of, sorry, false is the do-nothing of or. But false is the dominator of and. 0 is the dominator of the dot operator. So these are still here, and so that'd be the domination laws. And so we have all those laws. Um, you can pick their names. You know, we have the double negation, the idempotent, the identity, the domination, the commutative, the associative, the distributive. Uh, kind of get down through these others. Normally, that would be called the unit property. And this would be called the zero property. But in particular, the unit and the zero property really say that we have unique complements. It's the unique complement property. And you go through all of these you know, laws that you have. If you wanted to actually verify laws, and so we have all the things that actually happen, we give their own names if we use them a lot. Um, to verify, first level would be just simply make a table. If you're saying they're equal, if you're saying they're logically equivalent, we're going to show that these two things have the exact same table values. Same inputs cause same outputs, same thing. And so we can make a table for each of these however we want to do it. So for example, if I wanted to do x plus x complement is supposed to be 1, how would I prove, how would I show that in a table? Well, we only have x, right, which is either a 0 or a 1. What's x's complement? 
it's a 1 or a 0, what would be x plus x complement? 1 and 1 is that the same as 1? And what's 1? It's 1. <laughs> it's always 1. Are these the same? And so here, again, under back in logic, you would have things like Q is logically equivalent to, say, P. What was I really needing you to do would be to show that the biconditional is a tautology, right? But here we don't have biconditional <laughs> comparison. Really, all you do is say the word, hey, look, they're the same. So therefore, x plus x complement is 1. Their table values are the same, they're the same. So you can do that for all of these particular laws. If I have the three variable laws, like associativity, you know, parenthesis x plus y, close parenthesis plus z, I've got three things, so I'm going to have eight rows, and I have to make the show, entire table to show that the, the left hand side is the same truth, is the same bit values as the right hand side. Yeah, they're the same. The second thing that we do is we actually use them. In other words, we know some of them to be true, or all of them to be true, and we use them. Uh, for example, we've done things like this without saying what's actually going on before. If I would do college algebra or elementary algebra, in college algebra, where my objects are simply all of the real numbers, the operations are, you know, things like plus and times and, and power and divide, right? All of those in parentheses and all these other sort of operations that exist for these things. We had things like, okay, you have x squared minus 2x uh, minus 8. And I said, hey, you know what that's equal to? That's equal to x minus 4 times x plus 2. What did I actually do? We write this equality, but what happened is between this equality in my head, I used the distributive law. The distributive law of college algebra has been used to be able to go ahead and knock this thing back out. Sometimes on distribution, we go that way and we call it multiplying it out. We actually use the word distribution. But normally when you go backwards, we call it factoring. But what is factoring? It's the distribution law because we have the commutative property. Left equals right is right equals left, which guess what? I don't care which direction you go. The law is the law no matter which way we apply it. So what we did in college algebra, we can do in Boolean algebras, we just have to understand what did you just do on that equal? So if I would write things like under a Boolean algebra where we have only zeros and ones and variables and the plus op, the dot op, and the bar op, which is this whole idea of or, bitwise or, bitwise and, and negation, complement. Right, if I would do things like this and I had things like, okay, what is x dotted with 1 plus y complement? And I'd ask for things like rewrite this. Well, I could do things like, well, that's just still the complement. I could actually use this kind of, I could use distribution, right? So that would be x dot 1 plus x dot y. Is everybody okay with that? What is x dot 1? And actually, what did I, like for example, what law was used here to, for this equality? I used distribution. What is x dot 1? Why? Because of? Do, 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 do. That was the what law? Identity. It was the identity law. <coughs> because of the identity law, x dot 1, which we, we kind of get stuck with, we think college algebra, this is not times the number 1. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is not times the number 1. This is dot the object 1. 
dot the bit one. So we have to remember in the back of our minds, we are not doing college algebra. We're doing Boolean algebra. This is different. And so that would be x plus, which I could leave that as a parenthesis, x dot y, but I have this entire complement. And it's like, well, you know what? I'm going to take that complement through. That's x complement dot x dot y complement. What did I just use? I used De Morgan's. So De Morgan's is a distribution of the complement, right? It's another De Morgan's is actually a distribution of the complement. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and stop, or I could keep on going if I wanted to, right? As we keep going through this, we could keep writing and say, what is this equal to? So things in the past, what we did is this is a process we might call using the laws. Using these laws is sometimes called what? We use words like simplification. Please simplify that expression. Well, what does that even mean? If I give you a college algebra problem and I say, please simplify that expression, you're like, well, I'm going to use a bunch of laws until what? Until it looks good. That's a very interesting question of when do you stop? Because if you want to, the laws are both ways. You can keep going, and you can go backwards, and then go forwards again. Let's pick a different law, right? We can keep going through this until maybe at the very, very end, a problem might become, for example, like one, like a dominator shows up. <laughs> oh, this was x plus one. One. I'm done. It's like, wow, that was a nice quote unquote simplification. When I talk about simplification, it's just use the laws over and over and over until you believe the thing that ended up at the other end looks good, right? Looks nice. It's simpler than the original one. That's not as messy. But what does that require us to do? Know those laws and be careful. Do not confuse them with college algebra. Right? You have to remember. That's one of the reasons why I don't like the dot and plus, because people keep confusing it. If this problem would have been x and 1 or y complement, there is no confusion. There is no confusion at all when you use those sorts of symbols. When you use a dot and plus, it gets all weird, because you're constantly thinking, is that what I'm doing? No, you're doing this. Not that, this. Be careful. So when in doubt, if you get a little confused, turn it into V and bridge. Get rid of the dot and plus and make your life a little easier, especially when you see things like this. Say, You see that, and then somebody says, oh, I know what that's equal to. That's equal to x plus y dot x plus z, and it's like, well, college algebra doesn't allow that. I'm like, you're, I'm, you're right, it doesn't. Boolean algebra does. This is not addition and multiplication. This is and and or. Or I probably should have said it the other way. Or and and, so that the or goes with the addition and multiplication goes with and. So be careful. Right? Because if I did this, 1 plus... 3 times 4, does that distribute? Of course not. But this isn't college algebra. right? This is Boolean algebra. Be careful. And again, there is absolutely no confusion if you write it like this. It's like, oh, I feel better. Why? Because I did that in logic. And I'm bringing something to bear that I already knew how to do. OK, one of the things that we can now do is combine using them with verifying. I can verify every single one of these laws by using tables. But on the other hand, in its most basic sense, a Boolean algebra only has five laws. Right? We could sit there and say that, OK, could we verify some of the laws given only the fact that a Boolean algebra, by its default, has only the identity. The identity must be given. This is the basis. 
where do you start with a Boolean algebra? You start off with 0, 1, 2 binary operators, 1 unary operator, and then 5 laws. That's your basis. That's where you start. So I assume that the identity is true. I assume that the complement is true. I assume that the associativity is true. I assume that commutativity is true. And I assume that distributive is true. So those five things are just true. Why? Because if I didn't have them, it wouldn't even be a Boolean algebra. But that would automatically mean that I could use those laws to somehow do things like, could I verify the idempotent? That x or x is supposed to be x. And so we go back here and say, all right. Um, the only laws that we've got would be that x or 0 is x, and x and 1 is x. So this is what I know. These are true. That's my identity. I know that x or x's complement is 1, and x and x's complement is 0. I know that x or y or z is x or y or z, as well as the and version as well. I know that x or y is y or x, that's commutativity, as well as the and version. And I know that x or y and z is x or y and x or z with you know these three also have their other versions right we have the identity the complement the associative the commutative and the distributive these things are true if these are the only laws that you have and the only laws that you're allowed to use, can you show that x or x equals something, which equals something, which equals something, which equals something, which equals, something, which equals x? <coughs> and each of these equals, as I go through my process, must use only one of those five. Because I know those exist. Why? Because if they didn't, it wouldn't be Boolean algebra. I have to assume this is true. This is my basis. This is my, my assumption of reality is that these five things are. Now, we have two processes of equality. What are two processes of equality? You could start on the left and get to the right. Or you could start on the right and get to the left. Now, given that, right, I can start on the right and get to the left or left to right, and I only got these laws, which one do you want to start on? Because if I go from right to left, what do I do? I have to take my right and make it more complicated, add stuff to it that does not change it. I don't know, like maybe something like, like that. Or maybe like that. What do I know? I have the identity laws. What are the identity laws? I can take x and make it more complicated, and it won't change because it's the identity. But, well, you're going to be putting a 1 or a 0. Yes, I am. But guess what? I have the commutative laws. And the commutative laws have 1 and 0 with this weird, complicated-looking version of it. But now that it's all mixed up, well, yeah, I have distribution, which would allow me to mix it up a little bit. So the identity, remember, you can go things from simple and make it more complicated. It's two-sided. Your other approach is to do what? Simplification. 
somehow take this and make it simpler. Well, my problem with that is, does that occur on any of the simplification things that you see? No. So it might be a little bit hard to work with. It might be easier to make it uglier, less simple, than it is to make it simple. But guess what? Once you go this way, you can actually go the other way because you'll have figured it out because equality is commutative. If it wasn't commutative, we'd have a problem. Okay. So let's try and start on the right and let's see if we can get to the left by using things that I recognize. So we know these things. All right. So let's start off with X. X. Now, what's my goal? I want a X or X is what I eventually want, right? I want an X or X here. Uh, so probably I could do this X and I could use this because that's X. Or I could use that because that's X. Which one do you want to try? You want to use the and? All right, let's go ahead and use the and. Let's say that x is the same thing as x and 1. That hasn't changed anything. All I did was write this thing backwards, right? But it's commutative, doesn't matter. All right, but what's 1? I could take that 1 and replace it with x or x's complement. Do I have a mixture of operators? Yes. yes, I have that this is actually x and x or x and x's complement. All right. Hey, look, I've got an x and x, but I was supposed to have an x or x. But let's skip that for a second. I got my x's separated by an and's, but I've got this stuff tagging along. By the way, what is x and x's complement? It's zero. it's zero. So what is this? This is actually x and x or zero. By the way, what's anything? This x is anything, right? It's not really an x. It's anything or zero. It's the anything. It's the do nothing, so that's just simply x and x. So what did I just show? x and x is x, I show the other idempotent law. Oh. Darn. But, there we go. <laughs> but what happened? I showed my other idempotent law by starting focusing on, I wanted to get an x or x, but I started off with the and. So if this was, okay, I just showed x and x equals x, so that's one of the idempotent laws. Looking at this, what do you think we should, could have done to do the idempotent law I asked for? X is equal to X or zero. But what is zero? That's X and X bar. But then I could use the distributive, which would be X or X and X or X bar. But what's x or x bar? One. And so this is actually x or x and one. But what's anything and one? And so that's just x or x. Yay, we showed it. So x or x is indeed x. The, uh, this identity law. Now, I could have gone backwards. Right, this equality allows me to figure out what I could have done if I wanted to make it simpler. Here's the crazy part. You want to make this simpler. How do I make it simpler? You add stuff to it. I put add stuff to it. <laughs> I, I do an and one. Then I realize, well, what's one? One is actually x or x bar. And then we see this. This, going back to there, recognizes what? It recognizes I have a x or and an x or. Those can come out 
as the XOR leaving you X and. What is that? That's distribution, but when I normally go this direction, we would call it what? Factoring. Which one looks like it was easier to imagine? Okay. We usually struggle with factoring, and we don't struggle with distribution, because distribution is just simply distribute. What's factoring? Don't do that. Don't doing is usually more difficult than doing. It's hard to see. But it is the same thing. I could have gone the other way. It just wouldn't have been as quote unquote pretty. But now that I have one, I can do it the other way. Is everybody okay with that? Let's try another one. What is zero's complement? How do you know that? Because guess what? Under Boolean algebra, you only have the identity complement associative, commutative, and distributive. Zero's complement is not one until you can show it. Hmm. What? Why can't it be itself? Because it's not, but <laughs> why? These five laws must somehow come together to say that using the law, using the law, using the law, using the law, one. Mm -hmm. Somehow these five laws <laughs> are going to be nested to show that zero's complement is one and one's complement is zero. And so a lot of times when you go through this, this is like, you know, like through the homework problems, what one of the things that you do is I've used these five laws to prove what? The idempotent. Now that I've done it, what do I have? The idempotent. Because if you say you have the idempotent law, what are you really saying? You're saying this. Skip. Right? I'm here. I can go here. Why? I've already done it. Since I've already done it and I know it's true, I'm just going to write the answer. And we all agree. We know how to do this. I'm skipping it. It's now called the idempotent law. Right? That's how, we, that's, that's how math works, right? What is something new? It's a bunch of old stuff mixed together to make the new thing. And now that I know how to do that, I'm going to skip all the work. And I'm going to go to the answer. Why? Because I, I can. So that's one of the things that has to happen as you grow threes, is that you can make all of the other laws from only these five. On the other hand, it also tells us what? These are the basis because there's no way to use them to make each other. Right? You can't pick anything else. You have to have these five as the minimum. I can't use the complement and distributive to somehow make commutativity. These are absolutely necessary. It's circular. This is your beginning. This is your seed. From these, all the other laws can grow. The it's always, I always find, kind of find it amazing when um, I don't do enough Boolean algebra by hand to get so comfortable at it as I've seen other people who just do nothing but Boolean algebra that they work through that as if it's college algebra, like distribution, simplification. They have all this stuff all pulls out, and that's domination. I still have to think about it. It's like, okay, times one. Okay, yeah. Zero, yeah. I'm still thinking about those laws. Eventually, if you do enough of this, you get so comfortable, it's like college algebra. But that's because you've done, what, five years, you know, since you've been. So if you start, what's, how old are you normally when you start about the first time you do anything that has a variable in it? It would be, what, 10? Right? You're 10 years old-ish, maybe nine, the first time they sort of throw you an X or a Y or some other things like that. And so you're 20-something. So you've had 10 years of symbol manipulation, all of which is one type of algebra. So if you have, say, 10 some years of symbol manipulation using Boolean algebra, it's always neat to watch people just simply fly through it. It's like, why? Well, I don't have to think about it anymore. The laws are breathing. I just know what it does. All right. <clears throat>